Have you ever wanted to use an image for a project? You import it and you're ready to use it, but then you realize, wait a minute, why does it have this white background? How do I get rid of that? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you several examples of how you can cut out an image in Photoshop, as well as removing entire backgrounds. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Scott and I'm back with a Photoshop tutorial on how to cut out an image in Photoshop. There's probably hundreds of ways to actually go about this in Photoshop, but I thought I'd show you just a few examples of how this can be accomplished. All right, let's dive in. So I've got my HTML5 logo and it's a simple graphic that I should be able to remove the white background from pretty easily. I also may want to remove the white from the inside of the number five. So the first step would be to find the magic wand tool. Photoshop has a toolbar on the left and you can find the magic wand near the top. And if you right click and hold down on the tool, it will give you an option to choose from three different tools. We already have the magic wand tool selected and that's the one that we want to use. The next step is super simple. Just hover over the white background and click on it. This will create a dotted line or marching ants as some people call it. And this represents the area you want to remove. And then using a keyboard shortcut, I'll press command X to cut out the background. So that checkered background now means the image has a transparent background. And then I can do the same for the inside of the number five. I can click inside of it, delete that area and make it transparent as well. So that was pretty straightforward and an easy example, but let's move on to another one. Okay, so now I have the Nike logo here and at first glance, it seems like I could do exactly what I did with the HTML5 logo, right? I can just use my magic wand and select the white background and get rid of it. But let's see what happens. Well, what happens is we have a black background and that's not what we wanted. Why is it doing that? Let's look over at our image layer and you can see that there's an icon of a lock next to our layer, which means that the image cannot be changed. Most of the time you can just double click on the lock to unlock the layer, but in this case, it still isn't going away. So I'm going to press command Z to undo what I just did and then command D, D as in dog, to deselect. So what we need to do now is go up to image and select mode. Click on RGB color, and then we'll need to go back to our image layer and double click on the lock to unlock it. Now I can select the white background and then using command X, I can delete it. At this point, the image is ready to go. You could save it as a PNG and it will have a transparent background. So I'm going to go up to file and click save as. And then I'm going to save on my computer. It already has PNG pre-selected here, but if it doesn't, you can hit the drop down box to the side and you'll see a list of different file formats that you can choose from. Look for PNG since that's the format that will give us a transparent background. And then I'm going to change the name of my file to Nike logo PNG and then I'll save it. Next I'll save this as a large file. So let's say that we want to bring this image into another program like Premiere, just to test out our transparent image. We can import the file one of two ways. First, I'll hit Command I to import a file. Then I'll select the image that I just saved, which is the Nike logo PNG file, and then I'll click import. After that, I'm going to click and drag that file onto my timeline. And then you can see that it's got a transparent background now. The white around the logo is now gone and I can move it around and resize it however I want. But let's say that this original Nike image that I already have on screen with the white background is set exactly how I want it. But let's assume that I took a lot of time to carefully place this logo in exactly this spot and I don't want to have to go through the trouble of importing a new image and then try to reposition that image into this spot. Well, that brings us to our second way of importing an image into Premiere. If we go to our original Nike image on the left, and then we right click on it and scroll down to replace footage and click on that. Then I can select the new image that we just created a moment ago, the Nike logo PNG and click that to open it. Now it has replaced the old image with our new logo with a transparent background. And we did all that without having to go through the trouble of repositioning the image. So that's all you need to do in order to save an image as a PNG. So those were two easy examples. Well, let's move on to something that's a little bit more complex. 
Okay, so we have this basketball hoop on a white background. The netting on the hoop creates more of an intricate object to cut around. So this isn't gonna be easy as using the magic wand, but let's try anyways and see what happens. So I selected the background and pressed Command X and it removed the background, but it also removed a large part of the netting, which obviously isn't good. There's a couple of ways we can get around this, but first I'm going to hit Command Z and Command D to undo and deselect. Let's try using the magnetic lasso tool, which does what it sounds like. It acts as a magnet sticking to the object that you want to trace out. And it does a pretty decent job, but once you get down to the lower parts of the netting, it's going to have trouble tracing the object. You can right click to add points along the path, and that will help the magnetic lasso around those complicated areas. So now I'm going to connect my loop here, and if I hit Command X, you will see that it did a pretty good job of cutting around the netting, but I think there's an easier, faster way to do this. So I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and then select Curves. And the reason why the Magic Wand was having issues selecting the background was because the netting and the background were too similar in contrast. So with the curves, we can darken the image slightly to enhance the difference in contrast between the netting and the white background. So now when we go back to our magic wand and select the background, it has no problem at all removing it. And if you'd like to go back to the original contrast, you can always go back up to curves and change it to where it was. But for now, I'm going to leave it to where I had it. And then using the magic wand, you can select the areas inside the netting to remove those. I'll do a couple here, but I'm not going to do each and every single one of these because that would take a while and I think you guys get the idea. Okay, let's move on to our final example. So we have a picture of a soccer ball that we want to cut out from the background, but the background in this case is no longer a white one. It's got all of these other elements to it with the grass in front of it and the stadium behind it. So how do we separate the ball from the rest of the image? The magic wand works great when you have a background and foreground elements that are highly contrasted from one another. So we can easily separate the two, but in this case, I don't think the magic wand is going to work very well, but let's try it out and see what happens. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So we need to try another tool. So let's go back to the magnetic lasso tool and trace out the ball like we did before with a basketball hoop net. Make sure that you have this icon selected. It's of the two squares merged together. Basically what that does is it allows you to make additional selections with your magnetic lasso after you've traced all the way around the object. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to trace around the ball, and don't worry, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'll show you how you can fix any of the weird spots that you might have. And don't worry about the blades of grass in front of the ball. I'm going to show you how to get rid of those as well. So I'll just check around the ball to see if there's any spots that I can fix. And I've missed this one area here. So I'm going to carefully retrace the line on top of the ball and then reconnect the dots here. And this will add my newly traced line into the main one that I just did a moment ago. Next, we'll add a masking layer. You can find that in the lower right corner of Photoshop. It's the icon that looks like a rectangle with a circle inside of it. So that right there did a lot of what we needed already. Pretty much everything in the background is now gone. We do have some grass in front of the ball and we need to smooth out our mask, but it's starting to come together at this point. We can adjust the feather settings to about 0.5 and that will smooth out the edges around the ball just a bit. 
Then using the paintbrush tool, we can actually paint out or paint back in parts of the mask. So making sure that we have the color black selected, I'll go in and change my brush size to a smaller one that gives me a little bit more control. I'm also gonna make sure that the edge of my paintbrush has a soft edge. And then simply by painting the sides, you can smooth out the edges of the ball. And if you go too far and you make a mistake, you can switch the paintbrush to the color white, which will bring back the image when you paint over it. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. You don't necessarily have to go down to every little inch or pixel. I'm just kind of going over it lightly. And I could spend a lot of time really getting this perfectly rounded, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys the next step. And that's finally getting rid of the grass in front of the ball. Photoshop has some really powerful tools, and this next tool is certainly up there in its incredible ability to hide imperfections. So let's say you wanted to get rid of some of the dirt or the blemishes on top of the ball. You can use the spot healing brush tool. So I'm going to select that tool and then I'm going to go over to my image layer and make sure that my image is selected and not my mask. And then you can just find any spot you want to cover, click and drag over that spot with your mouse, and then the spot healing brush seamlessly blends over it. And then after that, you could spend a lot of time just going over the entire ball and getting rid of any spots that you want to. It's pretty incredible. But let's see how the spot healing brush can work with the grass. It could possibly work here, but sometimes when you have a lot of different color patterns and objects together like this, you might end up warping some of the image, so you may have to go and use another tool. So let's try using the healing brush instead, and that's right under the spot healing brush. With a healing brush, you'll need to sample from an area you'd like to copy by hitting the option key and that's so you can paint over the blemished area with it. So that worked out okay, but let's try the clone stamp tool. This tool is similar to the healing brush in that you need to sample an area you'd like to copy first, also by hitting the option key, and then you can paint over the blemished area. And this does exactly what it sounds like. It's cloning from the area you'd like to copy from over the area that you want to get rid of. All right, let's go back to the spot healing brush and see if this works here. Yeah, that actually worked out surprisingly well. It actually looks a lot better than what it did before. Then finally, I'll just touch up the bottom of the ball here, going back to my paintbrush and selecting my mask. See, I'll just smooth out the bottom here really quickly. And then there you have it. There's four examples of how you can cut out an image in Photoshop. What tools would you guys use to cut out images in Photoshop? What was your favorite one? The magnetic lasso, the magic wand, or maybe another tool? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what other tutorials you might like to see as well. And speaking of comments, I just wanna say thank you to Davey for leaving a wonderful comment on my last video, how to make a quick timeline animation in Premiere. You guys can check that out by clicking the link above. And thanks again, Davey, I really appreciate that. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share with anyone you might think might find this useful. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials on Premiere, Photoshop, and even tips and tricks on how to run your own creative freelancing business.
And I just quickly want to say thank you to those who've recently subscribed. I've randomly selected a few subscribers here to feature in this video, but if you want the chance to become a featured subscriber, please do subscribe and leave a comment below answering my question about this week's Photoshop tutorial on which was your favorite tool to cut out an image, and then I'll randomly pick a few of the responses to feature. Also, please check out my social media pages on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links in the description below. Alright, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.